Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Ryan118. Now, uh, recently on the channel, I've done my Celtic season review, so if you want to go and watch that before watching this transfer video, then that is the previous video. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you all for the support, and that took a long time to make, and it seems a lot of people enjoyed it and such, so thank you all for the good words on that. But here today, we're here to talk about Celtic again, and um, the good news is, for other people who don't really care about these type of videos and care more about my FIFA and such, is that my exams are done tomorrow. Hooray, hi, good. Um, tomorrow... Uh, and the next few days, hopefully the, the return of FIFA content and such, because I actually have the time to sit down and, and do those, record them, edit them and all the rest of it, so hopefully they will be back in the coming days. But today is a Celtic Transfer Talk episode, this episode of it isn't so much the usual way I do the Celtic Transfer Talk videos today, it is about who I think should leave the club, we're focusing on one thing, we're not focusing on the rumours and the news that is coming in um, from, from sources and such, we're just talking about players who I think Celtic should get rid of, uh, who I don't think should be at the club anymore, who should stay, who should go, because there's a lot of names being thrown about and I'm just going to give my opinion on whether they should stay or go now, you might know Keepers, he has a YouTube channel similar, doing some Celtic transfer stuff and that, he done a video like this uh, last week or so, talking about who should leave Celtic, so if you want to check out his video as well, I'll put that in the description, he done a really good video, so you might enjoy that as well, I thought I'd give him some credit, since it's quite a similar video, um, but today I'm here to talk about who I think should leave, who should go, who should stay, who should we release to get a bit more money in, or maybe just clean up the wage budget a little to spend it on better players, because there's a lot of players that we have who are hogging up transfer, uh, sorry, wage budget, who I think, you know, we don't need, well, there's no point in paying the money that we're paying for the wages, when it could be put into better players, it could be put into better things, so there's some players who I think ultimately should be taken off the wage roll and transfer listed or released, uh, a lot of players probably will be getting released, uh, Chris Commons for such, Effie Ambrose, so a lot of these players who are going to come up here might already be, you know, basically confirmed to leave the club, as I said, Effie Ambrose and Chris Commons, so a lot might be a no discussion, but it's my opinion on whether I'd keep them or whether I'd sell them, I want to know your opinion as well, so you can leave that in the comments if you like. I believe there is 13 players we're going to go through and I'm actually going to bring up something on the, the, the screen talking about whether I think they should stay or go. I'm using um, a, an article from the Read Celtic website so another link I'll put in the description for you if you want to go and check the article for yourself um, and it's basically just would you keep them, would you not and there's 13 players we're going to try and quickly fly through all 13. Don't spend too much time because I don't want it being like a 20 minute video. But ultimately, there's players who've got to go. So let's discuss who I think should stay and who should go. So the first player up, and you might see different colours reflecting in my glasses now, by the way, so you're going to have to deal with that because I'm on the website. The first player is um, Logan Bailey, the goalkeeper who we signed a few years ago. Uh, for, uh, Ronnie Dyla was the man who signed him, I believe it was a Ronnie Dyla signing. He was brought in as a backup keeper, and he was a backup keeper under Ronnie Dyla. Now he's more of a reserve keeper. We've not seen a lot of him. I've actually seen none of them. You, I, I'm actually surprised the guy's still around and living because I fucking forgot he existed till Trophy Day. Um, but a Belgian keeper who I can't remember who we signed from. Can't I couldn't tell you for the life of me who we signed him from. I couldn't tell you for the life of me how much we spent on him either. He's had so little to do at Celtic. Uh, and the question is, is he happy? I don't know. Uh, how would you feel being a, a you know a goalkeeper who's not played at all? I mean, he's he's had one or two appearances I think uh, in the space of two or three years being here. Uh, in first team games so you know if he's happy to stay I, I, he can stay I suppose but my opinion is we should keep him just for the fact that if he's not too bothered about it it's always good having that you know third option around uh, and I don't know he's not going to get played so is it really going to affect us keeping or selling him I don't know it's always good to just have that safety net because at the end of the day how many goalkeepers are actually going to be willing to come to us, how many, like, being realistic, how many keepers I want to come unless they're going to be the first team keeper, we well, already signed Doris de Vries last season, I don't think a lot of, there's going to be a lot of options available, so I think we need to keep those, the three keepers we've got to now is Gordon, Doris de Vries, uh, and, and Logan Bailey, uh, and Logan Bailey is probably one of the best we'll get for that third choice keeper, and that's why I'd keep him around, just personally, I wouldn't be bothered if we saw him though, uh, he's really a weird one, it's not like I'm dying to keep him around, or, or dying to see him go, I don't, I honestly couldn't care less, that's Logan Bailey, um, if I was Brendan Rodgers, I'd, I'd keep him around just for that safety net option. The second name on the list is Emilio Izaguirre, now he's basically confirmed to stay, but we'll talk about whether I would have kept him or sold him, he's signed a one year extension on his contract once again, which he'd done at the end of last season as well. 
We all thought he was going to leave at the end of last season. He stayed. We all thought he was going to leave at the end of this season. But once again, he has renewed the contract. I'm very happy he has. If I was Brendan Rodgers, once again, he's a player I would keep around. I feel like we need Emilio Zagiri as a backup to Kieran Tierney. He is still a good player. And we saw that when Tierney was injured between like November and January time. Uh, he he done a good job coming in and, and filling in. He'd done what he had to do. He wasn't exceptional. He wasn't bad. He was just, just right. We just needed that little that backup for Kieran Tierney. And he still does a job when he's on the park. And he's Celtic through and through. He bleeds green and white. He's a fantastic player. So passionate about the club. And I would like to keep him around um, f for as long as he's fit. You know, If he's still fit this time next season, I would renew his contract again, in my opinion. There's not many left-backs who are going to be better than Kieran Tierney. We're going to be in no rush to, to, to get rid of Kieran Tierney in the first team. So, back up... If a left back, it's not the most important position where you need to spend money, is it? So I think Emilio Zagiri is a good backup for now, and he will be in, until it comes to a time where he's unfit or he, he's completely lost it. But right now, he still does a solid job and everything he's needed. So I'd keep him around. I think we've done the right thing renewing his his one uh, his, his contract. Third player, and he's basically confirmed to leave. Uh, Chris Commons, we all know he's leaving. He's had his farewell and such for Celtic. I would have done the same thing. I would have let him go at the end of his contract, in my opinion. So we're doing the right thing there and getting rid of him. I think he's a player just for the wages because he's. I think he's still on quite a, a decent amount of money a week because he's been one of he was one of our top players for for quite a number of years. Um, you know, he, he had that kind of biggish contract, bigger than a lot of the players probably will be on. Uh, maybe on like ten to twenty grand a week and freeing that up to bring in another player is quite important. He's not going to get a game. He's he's getting older. Let him go to Hibs or wherever he's going to go and hopefully he can get a couple of years out the the last part of his career. He's He's been a great servant to Celtic, what can we say? A great player, but it's just a player who, we, you know, I don't see us why, why we'd keep him around. So, Chris Commons, I, I would get rid of. Sadie Yanko, get rid of him. Just, just, just get rid of him. Sadie Yanko is not quality, he's not good. Uh, he's not a Celtic player. I don't actually know how he's been doing at Barnsley. He was obviously loaned out at Barnsley for the year, but at the start of the season, Jesus, he was he wasn't great, was he? When he was playing those European qualifiers in the first couple of games of the season, before he went out on loan to Barnsley, it was he was it was it was not great. In my opinion, my opinion, it was not good. I feel like he's somebody who we could potentially get a little bit, not a lot, probably like a hundred thousand pounds. Just a little bit of money for him. I just don't think we should keep Sadie Yanko around. I don't feel he's needed. We've got Mikhail Lustig, who's doing more than good enough at the right-back role. Um, uh, yes, we could probably do with a bit more depth. I mean, I can't even think off the top of my Christian Gamboa, that's how a backup right-back is. And, and when Gamboa plays, I, I really do like Gamboa. I really do like him. I think he's good. He's, he's He tries his hardest. He's a quick player. Sadie Yanko's just not going to get a look in. Why keep him around? He's not good at all. Um, I don't think he's got much to offer to Celtic and uh, if Barnsley want to take the chance to sign him permanently, why not just phone up Brendan, give him a bell, sign him uh, I would get rid of Sidi Yanko though I, I would get rid of him F.A. Ambrose, God love him but fuck off <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to sound cruel and I, I'm one. I, I'm, I'm very critical about F.A. Ambrose as a fly flying around um, I don't rate F.A. Ambrose at all and he's been doing well at Hibs actually, he's been doing well but he's just I don't like F.A. Ambrose, he's, he's some laugh, I like him as a person, uh, but his footballing ability isn't the greatest, we should be getting, we probably are getting rid of him, it, it's basically confirmed he'll be leaving the club, uh, I think it, I think it's his contract's just expiring, so I don't think we'll be bringing any money for him, but never in a million years would have re signed his contract if I was Brendan Rodgers, lovely guy right enough, he's some laugh, but I mean his footballing ability isn't the greatest. Uh, and the, there's no point keeping around it. We've got Boyata, Boyata has turned out brilliantly. We've got Semenovic, who's class. We've got Sviatchenko. We've got Toure for now. And we'll probably bring in another centre-half, I reckon. So, there's no need for him. No, and he can definitely go and try and rejuvenate his career a little somewhere else. So, let him do that. Because he's just got to the point, for me, I just I, I feel like he's a bomb scare. Whenever he's playing, whenever I need to watch Effie Ambrose playing at centre back, I'm worried for Celtic. So um, I would get rid of him. I'm, I'm sorry to. I know there's a lot of big Effie Ambrose fans. I know there is, but um, I'm, I'm not a fan of the guy. Not gonna lie. So I would get rid of Effie Ambrose. Near Baton, probably the best player out of all the players we're going to talk about. But that's quite easy. Uh, Near Baton, I don't think of him too highly. I've been very critical on Near Baton in the past. I don't think he's great. I think he takes a lot away from Celtic. I think he really does 
ruin a lot of our, our, our playing going forward. He slows the game down. He's just not suited to our type of football. And I'm not a fan of him. I feel he, he's, he's got a great height and physicality around him. But he doesn't implement it at all, in my opinion. He's, he's too fierce to go in for a tackle. He, he's just, he doesn't use it to his advantage when he really should be, and he's just not suited. He, and he really has ruined a lot of chances going forward. He slows the game down far too much. And because he is one of the better players out of these lots, this is a player who we could get a little bit of money for, like above one million. I think the, the bare max would probably be two million pound for him or something like that. But if we can bank on that money, before he rots away in the subs next season or something like that. I think we should take a chance. He reminds me, he's like our Maro and Fellaini. He can have a really good 10 minutes at one point, but then for 20 games he'll turn to shite. Uh, and it just reminds me a lot of Maro and Fellaini. It just, and, and at least Fellaini can use his physicality, but I just don't think Neil Baton does, and he doesn't play to as good as he can be. Uh, and I would just get rid of Neil Baton, in my opinion, because I think there is some value in him that we can, we can take advantage of and sell him off. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of teams who'd be happy to take his services. He's had a great, no, not great, but he's had a good stellar career at Celtic. He's won titles, he's played in the Champions League, he's an experienced player. Um, I think teams would be happy enough to pay the money for him, depending on what obviously we value him at. But uh, I would just get rid of him. I would. And it's a shame because I do think he has got some qualities, but he just does not play it the best he can. Owen O'Connell, this is, I would, like, I'm just going to say straight away, I wouldn't sell him. Owen O'Connell, I know we loaned about, but I genuinely thought he was having, until the Barcelona game where we got pumped 7-0, Owen O'Connell was having a pretty strong, like, showing I thought. I thought he was doing quite well when he was playing in the pre-season games and, and the, the first couple of games of the season. He was playing the qualifiers and he scored that goal against Leicester and he done well against Wolfsburg. He was he was showing like he could be good. He's got a lot of promise. He's still young. He's Irish. That, the Irish part has nothing to do. I'm just saying he's Irish. Uh, but I really do think there's potential in him. If we give him the chance, I think he could be turn out to be a good centre-back. Look at Dedrick Boyata. He was never given the chance, really. Uh, people gave up hope on him. And now look at him. And I think we could really, there could be a gem in Owen O'Connell. I think he's got a lot of potential. I really do think he's got a lot of potential. And if we sell him on, I think... He could turn out to be something good. And I think we should keep a hold of him, even if we've to loan him out for another year, which is which is stockpiling, I suppose. And it's not the best thing to do. It's not the healthiest thing for a player. But at the end of the day, I feel, I feel like Owen O'Connell can turn into something not necessarily great, but good. I think he can be a quality, like a, a good average player. And I think we should keep a hold of him just for that reason. I think he's got a lot of potential, and I'd like to see him stick around. That I thought he was doing well at the start of last season. Uh, and I, I think he deserves a chance at some point, so I would keep Owen O'Connell around. Leo Fasan, seen him play once in my life. Um, he, he was, he's been under 19s keeper for quite a while, I believe. He spent time out alone at Port Vale. His contract's expiring, I'm sure. We won't be re-signing it, as far as I'm aware. And I would just let it run out as well. Leo Fasan, as I said, uh, keep Bailey around, I would say. But for San, uh, I don't see it unless he was still willing or able to play in the under twenties team or whatever. If he's even allowed to, I know you're allowed to have like a registered one over twenty one player. So if he was happy enough with that, then fair enough. But no point in keeping him around. Let him go on do something with his career because he's not even going to get a look in the bench. Um, he's not going to be ahead of Logan Bailey or Doris Doris De Vries, So I would just get rid of him. Uh, I, I don't I don't imagine he'd free up a lot of wages either. I can't imagine he's on more than like two grand a week. But um, I Leo Fasan, not much. Can't say much about him, can I? The biggest waste of money we have ever spent. Scott Allen. Why the fucking hell did we sign Scott Allen? Uh, it just came, did, did, is the reason we signed him just because Rangers were going to sign him? Is that why Ronnie Dyla signed him? I mean, I'll admit that Ronnie Dyla wasn't the best at uh, recruiting. Because we see this, Jesus Christ, Scott Allen, why the fuck did we get rid of him? Just just get rid of him. I don't even care if there's potential in him. Eh, just get rid of him. Eh, what a waste of money. <laughs> what a, like, and he's a young guy, let him go back to Hibs or something, I don't know. Scott Allen, get rid of him. Don't need him. We don't need him. He's never going to get a game. Uh, and uh, I've never seen him play a game of football in my life. Not once. I, I, he made a couple of appearances under Ronnie Dyer, I think, off the bench. He might have started once or twice as well. I, I can't remember. I genuinely cannot remember anything about Scott Allen. Send him out. Or out the door. No point in keeping him. No point. This is another one of the most talkative ones of the bunch. Ryan Christie. Ryan Christie, obviously very young and showing a lot of promise. he done well in his own spell at Aberdeen. He won Aberdeen's Young Player of the Season award. Um, a player that's got a lot of potential. Um, should we keep him? 
I, I've made my point clear before in my pals and such. I just, I'm not a big fan of him. I'm really not a big fan of him. But it's the fact that he's got potential that's the kind of thing like, do we keep him? There's a lot of rumours going about that we want to bring in Johnny Hayes. Uh, but Aberdeen will only take it, uh, only give us Hayes if we give them Christie. Now, that in that situation, I'd get rid of Christie. Personally, I think Johnny Hayes is a, a really good player. Not really good to the extent where he'd be in our first team, but I think he's he's better than James Forrest, in my opinion. Uh, he could be a good backup. Or he could be good coming off the bench. And I, w- I would sacrifice Ryan Christie for him. But straight up, Ryan Christie, I'm, I'm really unsure. If I was to say yes or no, would I get rid of him? Probably not. Not this season. Maybe I'll loan him out again, see how he does, and then evaluate whether he becomes part of the first team plans for Celtic. That's what I'd do. But in the situation where we could get Johnny Hayes from, I'd I'd say yes, get rid of him then. But um, any other way, no. I would I'd keep him for at least another another year, maybe I'll loan him out, and see where it goes from there. Because he's got a lot of potential, and that's that's the, the risk you're taking and sacrificing him. Do are we risking a player who could turn out to be really really good and be really valuable to Celtic? But it's just when he did play this when he did play his games for Celtic before he went on to Aberdeen, it just wasn't that impressive to me. I think he made a lot of mistakes. Uh, his crossing, his shooting wasn't the best in the world. He scored a, a, a couple of goals, but um, overall, uh, in the vast majority, I, I just wasn't a massive fan. But just for the potential side of things, I'd keep him. But as I said, Johnny Hayes, go. I'll take Johnny Hayes. You might not agree with me there. A lot of people don't like Johnny Hayes. I've been seeing a lot of people say don't sign him. I think he's a good player, Johnny Hayes. So I, I would give up Christy for him. I just realised I'm nearly 20 minutes into this. Um, I did not realise how long I've been talking for. Fucking hell. Doris De Vries, I would keep for one more year just as just as a safety. I would like to bring in another keeper. Um, but um, next season I'd let him go. Doris De Vries, I would keep. Gary Mackay, Stephen... I don't think we have a lot of depth in the wings and until we do have depth I'd keep him around. When we do have a bit more security in those positions then I'd get rid of him but for now I'd keep Mackay Stephen just till we have more wingers in the team because we don't have a lot of options. If Scott Sinclair was to get injured uh, Forrest, uh, uh, you know, there's not a lot. There, there's not a lot. And I would keep him until we have depth in those those areas. I, I would keep him for that. Uh, and finally, Nadir Chief G. Fucking hell, get to fuck Nadir. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, be cruel. Nadir Chief G, a lot of shite. I'd get rid of him. Now, that's it. That, that's it for me. Uh, I'm sitting playing about with the computer now and trying to record. How unprofessional. Uh, that's it. Uh, let me know what you thought of those 13 players. Would you keep or sell them? You might disagree with me, but remember, it's my opinion. My opinion. If I was manager, it's what I'd do. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hit like and subscribe. I'm, I don't want to keep this going on any longer. So, um, I see, see you all that way. Let's see you later. Bye.